Um, so we had low expectations. So when we got over the last two weeks and all of a sudden we got to 250, then 350, then 550, 650, um, we were kind of like, you know, shitting our pants a little bit. So, um, and then everybody's showing up, that even, you know, that we doubled down on that. So, you know, uh, everybody knows uh, I'm a mortgage broker. Just, just like everybody in here, I started the same way you guys started, one man shop. Um, you know, our goal over the last, you know, three to four years has been, how do we put ourselves in a position as a company to compete for every deal, grow our business, and have a good reputation? Never in a million years did I think I would be, you know, sitting here with you guys doing this. This was like, no, I've never been in a social club, never been a, you know, team sport guy, never ever was that kind of person. But, you know, over the course of the last couple of years, I've seen a lack of leadership in the broker channel. And it's not trade association lack of leadership, it's just complete total lack of leadership. And, you know, for me as a as leader of a mortgage brokerage, trying to grow my business to see these thing practices, seeing these things going on within the channel that are just kind of going unmentioned, it, it was a point of frustration. So, you know, my employees come to me and say, Anthony, I, you know, I called my old customer, I'm trying to refinance them, and they already redid their loan with so-and-so. You know, uh, same like everybody else, you chalk it up and call it a day and move on. But after a while, you start to learn about the big picture of things, and you start to realize, you know, I'm a data guy, so I look at the numbers and I say, man, you know, brokers are really growing. You know, we have a strong channel. You see some of these lenders that, you know, are, are focused on the broker business and they're, they're, they're ascending to the top five in the country. Man, we, you know, we really need a voice. We really need to kind of have somebody out there that's championing us. And I never thought it would be me, um, you know, at all. Uh, but as far as, you know, the way I got started last year is I started with Brawl, and our message there was we just want brokers to know, like, I'm in South Jersey, there's a, comp a pretty famous company in South Jersey that, you know, is a bad guy, Brawl guy, um, that's not too far from us, and we were recruiting and hiring salespeople from their shop, and they were telling us, like, how their business model worked and how they were turning over our past clients. I said, man, I, I got to take this to the market. Everybody's got to know about this. Every broker in the country should be aware of, like, this business practice. You can't grow your business if your past customers are you know, being redone by the lenders that you're brokering them to. So we came out with a press release. Never thought that it would blow up into what it's blown up into. Um, I got to thank all the brokers uh, you know, across the country because you know, it's one thing to say, I agree with that, but it's another thing to do what you guys have done, which is kind of put your foot down and unite behind you know, that message of, hey, we're going to hold our lenders to a higher set of standards. If you're our partner, then support us in our businesses. Um, you know, stay true to your word and obviously put us in a position to grow our businesses. And you can only do that by supporting and protecting our relationship with our past customers. People look at our business and they say it's a transactional business. It's not a transactional business. It's not. It is a relationship-driven business. So we work so hard to get our customers um, that we need to be in a situation where a, we have lenders that are you know, supporting that relationship, but B, the next phase of this is, hey, we need to be in a position where we have the tools and the resources to you know, do what the big guys do, to stay in touch with our customers. And one of the things that I've learned as I've had an opportunity to view, uh, visit some of the biggest lenders in the country is that you go into these companies and they're very proud to show you all their technology. They're very proud to tell you, you know, how smart they are and how great they are at everything. And you kind of start to realize we're in a gun battle with a bow and arrow and we don't stand a chance if we don't start turning this thing around. So that's been my focus with this initiative is, hey, how do we put ourselves in a position where if I can get all the brokers to support what we're doing as an association, but then leverage that and actually go to lenders and try to partner with them to get the technology that we need, go to the technology companies that for the most part are not familiar with what brokers do and you know, what their roles in the mortgage lending business, to see if I can get them to understand what our vision is and what, how important we are to the industry. Um, so it's been an interesting ride and I'm gonna take you through what my vision is for us as a community and, and just, listen, Eric Thomas just went, it's kind of hard to follow him up, that was really good stuff. Um, <laughs> But somebody has to, and you know, I, Eric Thomas had emailed me about a week or maybe two weeks ago, and he said, "Hey, hit, give me three things that I, you know, that you really uh, that are important to your association." I, and I hope you kind of got the underlying part of the message that was there, which was 
I'm, I I'm, might be one of the top brokers in the country, I'll give you my whole playbook because I haven't competed against anybody in this room. I haven't competed against one mortgage broker at all. I compete against the big guys. So to me, it's like, you can copy everything I'm doing. I'll put it out there. I don't care if you do the exact same thing and I'll help you implement it. Um, but, but actually listen and understand that this isn't a pride thing. You know, it's okay to say I haven't figured it out and I'm gonna tell you a lot of things that I haven't figured out. But at the same time, you know, if you want to grow, if you really want to be in a position where you have a successful mortgage brokerage, if you want to get through this specific market cycle where there's going to be consolidation, obviously everybody's competing harder than they've ever been, uh, you know, rates, everybody in the market's just going real sharp on pricing. So if you want to be in this position uh, through this next market cycle where it's going to be hard, last eight years have been easy, it's easy to sell low rates. Moving forward, it's gonna get really, really hard. So to me, it's, it's more important now than ever for us to have this type of mechanism for us to communicate, um, for us to share ideas, and for us to be in a position where we are working or we're leveraging our size, because our size does matter. At the end of the day, we're bigger than, uh, together, we're bigger than Quicken, we're bigger than Wells Fargo, we're bigger than anybody out there. Uh, so there's no time like the present, that's the thing that I told Eric uh, to make sure you know he got out to you guys, which is, this is our time, a market cycle where the big guys need to start cutting technology. They need to sacrifice because you know, profits are down. They're gonna sacrifice on technology. They're gonna squeeze their retail. And this is a position where our nimbleness, our low overhead, and being in a position where we can compete for every deal because you know, we can you know, leverage bar pay compensation or going thinner, different lenders, um, it puts us in position to really, really grow our businesses. So I'm excited to walk you through this, and I, uh, and I think you guys are going to be really excited as well. So number one is um, what my number one thing is the rebrand. Is I, I sit on the sales floor at my company. We have 16 sales guys that are all I sit in a you know, cubicle, and we all, you know, the way I understand what's going on in the market or what customers are saying is by hearing it from my salespeople. So one of the biggest things that I pull my hair out about is when these guys have to sell themselves as a mortgage broker. So you know, we have a lot of reviews online that are all very positive. We've been in business for seven years. We've really worked to build an online brand that's good. But as soon as you tell a customer you're a mortgage broker, all of a sudden these things start coming up, you know, these kind of stigmas that are tied to us. We don't control the transaction. We're not reliable. Uh, I'd rather work with a direct lender all those things start kind of coming into the mix. And to me, uh, the reason why that's happening is in the aftermath of the housing crash, you know, mortgage brokers really got the short end of the stick. Um, the big banks, investment bankers, they got the best PR, they got the best marketing, and they branded the broker as, you know, incompetent and the reason for the crash. And, you know, if you saw uh, the big short, you know, I mean, I watched that, I was like, Jesus, pretty goddamn stupid. We look like in that movie. Um, but we're not, we're, you know, we really are mortgage experts. I mean, we're the, you know, I, I was sitting at dinner last night talking to a bunch of mortgage brokers and, you know, we are the guys that really put deals together, you know, give customers an expert, uh, you know, kind of outlook of why they're going to a certain program. Um, the realtors that we work with rely on us and, and enjoy working with us because of the depth of our knowledge. So my big thing is we need to start promoting it and we need to really get out there in a very proactive manner and we got to go directly to the National Real Estate uh, Association, uh, you know, we got to go to NAR, we got to go to the National Association of Home Builders. We got to have a proactive consumer facing messaging campaign where people are hearing the story, why work with an independent mortgage expert? Why work with a mortgage broker? Uh, because it's a very good story but nobody's telling it. As a matter of fact, the only person that's telling it are the banks that we compete against, and they say we suck, but that's not true. We all know how great we are. So to me, it's, it's the, the first part of what we're gonna do is we're gonna go out there and tell that story. So like last year, I went to the, the realtor convention, and I'm looking around, I see Movement Mortgage, I see Loan Depot, I see Quicken Loans. There is no mortgage broker representation. That's gonna change. We're gonna be there, we're gonna start going to all the state uh, realtor conventions and home builder conventions, and we're gonna start telling our story. And uh, I think it's gonna be something that you guys can all be proud of, and hopefully, if we all work together and share that story and stick to the same script, over the course of time, what you'll see is those stigmas are gonna go away, and instead of those stigmas being about us, because we're gonna tell the story of the bankers too, which is, hey listen, the banker is biased to the bank that they work for. So if you're a consumer, you go to a bank, 
They're trying to squeeze you into a program. They're trying to you know, sell you the rate that they can offer. We're biased to the consumer. Our entire focus is to get the consumer the best lender that works for them, the lowest rates, the lowest fees. Consumers don't know that, but we're going to tell that story. So it's really important. I think, uh, I think it's something that, like I said, as long as we all support and we all do it together, it'll be successful. Next thing is training resources. So this is kind of one of those things that I've learned over the last two to three years. Obviously, we're all on social media, LinkedIn, uh, Facebook. If you watch your guaranteed rates, your loan depots, all these com movement mortgages, you know, when they bring on their branches and they bring on their retail salespeople, they don't just simply say, hey, here's, you know, here's the keys to your office and go make it work. They have training, they have support. You know, you'll see Barry Habib, it goes to their movement um, you know, convention and they talk to, you know, he motivates the guys and does his whole shell spick. Um, they have this constant social media, branding, marketing, relationship development, real relationship development. And to me, that's kind of, this is where this workshop concept comes into play is, you know, we're not gonna do it this big every time. Our whole goal is to kind of have more, you know, reasonable uh, 100 to 150 people, but more training focus. We're gonna bring in the top loan officers that work with real estate agents. We're gonna bring in the top loan officers, period, with the uh, you know, most successful lead conversion and marketing companies. So you guys can get access and have Q&A sessions and learn how to grow your business. Uh, to me right now, if, you're, if you start a mortgage brokerage, you don't have those resources. We have a lot of lenders that they do an incredible job of training their products, their programs. To me, we need to have a better support system. So I've reached out to all the lenders um, over the course of the last you know, 60 to 90 days when I start you know, getting AIM going. I said, hey, how much would you be willing to give us? You know, if, if we reached out to you and said we were going to do a, you know, a workshop in Cincinnati, could you give us one of your trainers to come in and focus on not products and programs, but we, instead, of, instead of your training guy that does that, why don't you give us your marketing guy? Because I see the marketing you do, and it's really, really good. I like to get the loan officers to understand you know, how they can create videos and build their own content. So that is something that we're gonna start working on getting going uh, on a regular basis here in the next couple months. Uh, but again, it, to me, it's this event, you guys showing up, you guys coming here to support what, we're, what our message is, um, that lends credibility into getting the resources from these lenders because these lenders are now going to say, hey, listen, I don't mind giving this guy one of my top trainers or giving him uh, my head of marketing because he's going to have people show up. And to me, it's, you know, Eric Thomas touched on it before. It's that fuel. If, if you want it, we have to have a mechanism to get the resources for you to get it. And right now, there are no resources out there. So for the people that really want to grow their business, for the people that want to succeed but don't have access to the resources, that's the void that we're focused on filling is you tell me you want to be successful, okay, fine. I'm going to make sure that we put together an agenda or a training schedule that supports all of what you're trying to accomplish. If you want to learn how to brand yourself, you want to learn about Google Analytics, all those different things, we'll make sure we put together an agenda and we get the best possible people there, but you got to show up. Um, so that is, uh, that, like I said, next show that we're going to do, or next workshop we're going to do is going to be in Denver in June. Um, obviously, we're going to revisit California. This has been such a success, but moving forward after this inaugural event, it's going to be focused on training and putting you guys in a position where you're getting access to that information that you, you truly want. Other thing we're going to do is web-based training. So uh, one of the most common things I get feedback on is, hey, you know, your model, how did you become successful? How did you grow your business? And I have a very unique model when it comes to the mortgage broker very different than, you know, I've talked to other top brokers in the country, and most people have, you know, whether it's a volume of loan originators or a team of top producers, um, you know, they have a very specific business model where they kind of, their loan officers drive in the business. We've developed a business where we're doing the marketing, we're buying the leads, um, we have uh, unbelievable CRM, we have unbelievable retention of our past customers, um, and we've, we've kind of gone out and hired and trained our loan officers from scratch. We've brought them into the business and, and trained them to do this. So what, as I've talked to people, they've said, well, you know, if I want to go hire somebody, I don't have an in-house trainer. I don't have the resources to support that person. So, you know, I couldn't do that. So to me, again, it's, you know, I get it. And once a month uh, training uh, in, your, in your city once a year is not going to cut the mustard. So we're going to focus on doing weekly trainings that are geared toward that. Hey, if you're going to go out, you want to do lending trade? Great. We're going to do a training to help you understand how to set a budget, 
how to set your filters, how to geo-target so you're getting leads in your specific area so you can start with local, local uh, customers right immediate to you, um, how to you know, compete, what kind of serum and uh, drip marketing you need to have in place. There's so many variables that go into it, um, and you know, it's discouraging. If you want to go do it on your, your own, when you start looking at everything, it becomes really discouraging. Just to get set up with LendingTree, for example, I had three or four people that had to go through that process. So to me, us being in a position where we can work on behalf of the mortgage broker and say, hey, listen, A, Lending Tree, we're not one of these big guys. We need you to dumb it down or give us you know, access to your platform without it being so difficult for the broker to sign up. And then B, how do we develop the support so when these guys actually start spending money, they're able to convert and translate that business into dollars and cents. So we're gonna focus on, again, putting you guys in a position where whatever business model you want to build, whether you want to go out and hire and train somebody from scratch, you're in a position to do it and you don't have to have that in-house training. You can rely on AIM to put you in a position to do that. Next thing is compliance resources. Um, so I, one of the biggest things that I see out there is compliance for us is one of those situations where it's very uh, it's disproportionate in how expensive it is versus in our budgets versus you know the big guys. It's kind of one of those things where if you want to develop the policies and, and uh, procedures that are compliant and stay up to date, it's a very expensive proposition. Um, so I'll get questions all the time. We'll have uh, threads on our uh, Facebook uh, uh, group, mortgage broker group where people will be saying things that, you know, hey, listen, I do business this way, and you know, other people say, that's not compliant, and I, I think you should you know, uh, reevaluate. And there's a lot of confusion from the broker's perspective on what is you know, allowable, what's not allowable, and there really isn't a way for brokers to kind of go out there and get access to you know, real top lawyers, real uh, compliance people without spending a lot of money, and, and that's just kind of not in the budget. So one of the things that we did is we put together this uh, Compliance and Advisory Council, and it was one of my first and primary initiatives because I know that when I started my company, um, spending four to $5,000 on getting you know, an anti-money laundering policy in place, getting you know, a fair lending policy in place, getting my broker compensation agreements to be compliant, that's just not in the cards when you're starting a business from scratch and you're, you're building it up. So to me, this is one of those resources that, you know, going out and finding three or four of the best attorneys in compliance with, you know, over 100 year combined experience, going to the lenders that we work with and asking them to allow us access to their top chief compliance officers to help build a library of compliance resources for brokers was really important. There shouldn't be a question of whether this is compliant or not. It should be a question of, hey, I'm going to go right on my, uh, my compliance library. I'm going to look up a fair lending policy. I'm going to see what the interpretation is. I'm going to see how it applies specifically to us, and it's not something general that's for bankers or something bigger than us. Um, and we're going to give you access to that. And we're also going to put it in a position where it's templated so you can slap your logo on it, put your name on it, and make it your internal policy. So to me, again, it's, you know, I'm in a position now because of the way our brokerage has grown that when I have a compliance question, I can reach out to a lender and say, hey, can I ask your compliance guy this? And get that information. I realize that not every broker has that, and it's important that they get, uh, they have that kind of tool in place so they're not spending money on it or acting you know, out of compliance. So this is one of those things that we're really focused on, hey, we're gonna get the broker commentary or the broker's uh, inquiries and figure out what they have questions on, how they grow their business, how they put their kind of compliance plan together. If they're uh, about to go through a bank, uh, Department of Banking examination, getting ready for it, best practices, how long do you have to hold on to files for? Uh, there's, there's, there's a lot of confusion out there, and this is a tool that to me um, is it, it's necessary. And again, it goes into this whole lender partnership conversation where we have lenders that are billion dollar companies. They are our partners. They tell us they're our partners. So there's no reason that we shouldn't be able to leverage their resources and their unbelievable uh, wealth of you know, the, the, their top executives to help the whole entire community. So you know, it was a funny thing, when I reached out to some of, these, uh, some of these banks and asked for help, and I sent the email, templated email, to maybe 50 mortgage lenders, 40 or so completely said, no, I'm not gonna help you. And, and by the way, this isn't help, help me Garden State Home Loans owner, it was, this is for the whole entire mortgage broker community. But consistently, it's always those top guys that we all know are committed to our channel um, in their actions are the ones that volunteered. And I, I think it's important that we point that out because we need all of our lending partners to understand that, listen, I don't need to learn anymore about 
203k loans or or another product you know demonstration or your platform what I need is ways to make my business better to grow my business and and again, something like this. Basic resource, why wouldn't you give that to me? So um, I'm really excited about this. I think this is something that we're going to see everybody tap into and, again, customize it to your business. Next thing is last, the last 30 days, last 45 days or so, one of our biggest focuses has been technology. I, I visited with some of the top technology companies in the country. I visited with... Um, best CRM companies in the country. We have a bunch of great technology companies here as well. Um, in my personal opinion, we are completely uh, in a position of inferiority when it comes to technology. You know, most brokers don't have a good CRM. Most brokers don't even have a CRM. Uh, most brokers don't have a good digital mortgage platform. The birthday notification emails, the happy anniversary from the time you bought your home emails, um, that pre-approved buyer getting the notifications when you know that person has looked at MLS listings. Um, there's so many different ways that we can market and, and kind of uh, put everybody in a position to stay in touch with their clients and grow their business. But it all comes down to user adoption and you guys actually wanting to use it. So I hear it all the time. People tell me, I wish I had better technology. I wish I had a better CRM. Just understand. We're going to come out with it. You're going to, uh, you know, there's, there's going to be a period of time where you need to get used to it. Um, but just simply abandoning something is not an option. That's not going to be successful for you long term. And it's not because I'm saying it. It's because you have to just look at the way the market's going and uh, just realize that it's either we do what we need to do now or we're not going to be here. So really important, guys. And again, I'm just telling you as somebody has you know, going through this process of adopting technology. My loan officer's bitching at me. My, my entire staff, I have members of my staff here right now, and they'll tell you, you know, Anthony, when we, we adopted Salesforce, and we, I wanted them to start using text messaging over email. At first, everybody gave me negative feedback. Well, conversion and contact ratios went like this. No more negative feedback. They're originating more deals. Consumers get a text message, they're gonna respond to it. Email, one or two too many, you're gonna spam. So understanding and responding to these things is really important. Um, and again, I want to make these things, uh, I'm going to put you guys in a position where it's so user friendly that it's just plug and play. It's, you know, hey, I'm logging in, I put my name, my MLS number in, I have my customer data in here, I'm storing my customer data in here. It's integrated with my lenders, so they're passing through the updates on the approval process, so I can shoot out automated emails or text messages to tell them about updates with their loan. So these are all things that we're trying to do. We don't want to be something that, hey, you get and you're like, oh, this is clunky. I got to customize it. I got to hire a guy to customize it. We want it to be out of the box, something that's user friendly. So um, again, this is what we're working on. This is a big part of the plan. Next thing is we're rolling out, and this has been a pet project of mine for the last six or so months, and I've probably talked to a lot of you guys about it, is unbelievable amount of loans leave our channel wholesale because we are licensed in one or two states. Most brokers, I would say, how many, how many guys in here are licensed in one state? Right, so that's normal. That's, why would you be licensed in another state that you're not generating business in or you don't have referrals in? So we're all connected, social media. The way you guys know me is through social media. Um, that's the way our, you know, everybody communicates at this point. So I'm constantly in a situation where I'm hearing a customer call into one of my loan officers and say, hey, I want to refer you my guy in Virginia. Oh, we're not licensed in Virginia. Have a great day. That's it. Click. W what do you think happens next? That guy's going to go on a Google search or he's going to go on some lead provider and he's going to get in touch with guaranteed rate, Quicken, one of these big guys. We lose the loan. It's out of wholesale, okay? Broker Intro is a platform that we've developed and that we're going to be rolling out that we put all the AIM members in in every state and you're in a situation where you get a referral where you can't service it, Okay, let me, put it, let me connect this person with a broker in, if I'm in Jersey, in California, or New York, or Florida. But keeping it in our channel is incredibly important. Uh, you know, I've seen projections as, met as much as 10 to 15% of our overall current volume would increase if we found a way to keep these loans in our channel. So to me, I, I, if anybody's in the Brawl Facebook group, I'm constantly, brokers are constantly saying, hey, I need a broker in Utah, I need a broker in this state, and I pretty much have brokers memorized at this point where I'm like, all right, call this guy, call that guy. I want to be in a situation where it doesn't need to be that subjective, or if I forget somebody that's there, it's all automated. Hey, I put the guy through, we make sure it's, you know, obviously a broker that, you know, is, has been in business, has established itself, that's going to take care of your customer, 
but at the same time, those customers are staying in our channel, and then also for you guys, it's gonna be something where it creates leads. I'm not saying it's gonna be a huge driver of leads. California's a huge market, so obviously if we have a lot of members here, you know, there's only so many leads to go around, but this is more about the whole than it is about the individual. And to me, that's the big thing, is how do we keep growing wholesale? The more we grow our businesses, the more we grow the channel, the more uh, leverage that we have, um, the more uh, that we're able to get, like I said, technology companies to come in. When I communicate with lenders, get bigger commitments on what they're willing to do to support us. So it's all about keeping the loans in the channel. And, and our goal with this is to make it so user friendly. It's name, number, name, phone number, email. You hit submit, automated email goes out to that customer, connecting them with the new broker and you copied on it. Um, and again, user friendly, but it stays in wholesale. So you're gonna see this in the next 30 or 45 days. I think you guys, uh, if, you, if you could, take a look at it now because it's, it's, it's already out there. We just don't have enough brokers in it for it to be effective. After we, you know, after we start integrating all of our membership in there, that's when we're really gonna go live with it. Next thing is lender accountability. So obviously, you guys all, for the most part, know me because of Brawl. Um, my Brawl was, before Brawl was Brawl, in my office and my relationships with my lenders, I ha already had lender accountability. Um, to me, you know, as a guy that at one point, if, if our company did 50 loans in a month, we would be sending those loans to 11 different lenders. Whoever was best priced for Govy in a certain bracket, high balance, whatever it was, we, you know, we, we were kind of segmenting off our business. Um, but after we discovered some of the you know, business practices, cust uh, different lenders going after our past customers, we started to really look at our relationships in a completely different way. And we started to make real business decisions to say, hey, listen, I'm focused on not making the most money on this specific loan or this specific 10 loans. I'm not looking at it as a transactional situation. I'm looking at it as a partnership. If I work with a certain lender, are they gonna give me the, the, the underwriting team and the support staff that will you know, result in a, a more efficient process? Sometimes I'll have brokers come to me and you know, say, who, who do you work with? And I'll go over who I work with and, and they'll say, well, you know, I, I had a bad experience with them. I'm like, oh, okay, well, let's, let's, let's go through this. Um, because a lot of times a bad experience is a result of a bad AE. Just, I mean, that's just the truth. Um, so when we talk about it, I'll go over, you know, hey, what's your overall volume? Where do you send your business? And they'll say, I do eight loans a month, I send one of this lender, one of this lender, one of that lender. If you're doing business that way, it's very tough to develop the relationships that are necessary to have that efficient process. Like to me, you know, our processors, our team and knowing, our points of contact at the, you know, in underwriting and closing, that's what makes it efficient. That's what puts us in a position to close loans in 10 days. Um, and that's what's important. So, you know, over the next year, I think our biggest focus is gonna be beyond the whole brawl discussion, it's gonna be understanding lenders' actions mean something. Uh, I've met with a couple lenders just on this trip alone where you know, I sit down and I talk to them. They obviously know, who, you know, know what I'm about and what my, you know, uh, how I look at different lenders. And you know, they're still in this mindset of you know, that dialogue is gonna go away. Brokers don't care about anything but price. So you know, we'll still get their business. And I personally have more faith in brokers to believe that you're for sale. I, I, I just do. And because I've met all of you and I know what kind of, I know how you guys are and, I've, and just communicating with all the brokers I've talked to today and understanding that, yeah, the reason you're here today is because that does piss you off. And it is important that your lenders respect you and support you. So to me, seeing the lenders that are sponsors here today should tell you a lot about who's a true partner to our business because everybody that's here has been vetted, triple vetted, and are truly dedicated to this vision but also truly dedicated to you guys. And I mean that at a genuine level, meaning I'm talking to the CEO of the company, I'm talking to the head of operations, and you can tell the difference between the guys that are just you know, BSing you and the guys that are focused on the broker. Um, I, I think when I talk to guys, one of the things that I always learn about the guys who run different lenders is we're all passionate about our businesses. You, when I talk to you guys, you're very passionate about your customers, you're very passionate about growing your business, the reason you're here today is you're very passionate. You know, the, the guys that, the, that work for the lenders that are here, you know, they're passionate. You know, you heard Matt Ishbia, he's passionate. Brian View from Flagstar, Phil Shoemaker, guys from Parkside, Nation, Martin Warren. These are passionate guys. These are guys that are really 
they love this business and they love uh, originating business, growing the business and doing it the right way. When you go to talk to the guys that are ran by private equity or, or, or just you know, kind of numbers only driven, it, you, see it, you see the whole picture because when you try to tell them, hey listen, it's our customer and all that stuff, in their mind, they're immediately telling you, well, you know, we have to hit this number and, you know, we need to be, have this return on our servicing portfolio and all that stuff. You, I can't even have a passionate conversation with that guy because all he cares about is the numbers. And again, that's why it's so important that we're sitting here looking at the lenders that we're working with and understanding that if, if we're committed to them, the commitment back is going to continue to increase, meaning more technology, more resources, more uh, training, uh, and, and, and more than anything, more events like this that are not you know, dog and pony shows with a bunch of booths, but real substantive and real training focus. So supporting commitment to the mortgage broker, I think this is one of the things that I've heard a lot of feedback from you guys. And you know, I, I've, I, I think you're starting to see it uh, as far as on social media, if you've seen some of the, the training platforms that are coming out, I've been constantly in contact uh, with different training companies to focus on making a customized um, kind of web-based training portfolio for the mortgage broker. Uh, there's a Ginger Bell, uh, she has a go-to training uh, platform and we're working with her right now on a broker-specific, independent mortgage originator-specific training mechanism that we're kind of getting all the lenders to help us give, uh, dedicate different resources to you know, customize so it's useful to the mortgage broker. So, you guys, you might have already seen it, you might have already signed up for it, they actually had one today, I don't know how they scheduled that, but it's gonna be very, it's gonna be customized to your business. And, and one of the things I want from you guys is the feedback to say, hey, listen, Anthony, I, I watched the training video, but this is what I'm struggling with, or, or this specific area is an area that I need help with. Give me two weeks, we'll have an extra training session focused on that, but we gotta get the feedback. It's very important that you guys are sharing the information telling us what you need because the only way for me to go to work and get these things done is to hear it. And again, when I hear things, you know, everybody knows that's in the Brawl Facebook group. Somebody comes to me with an issue, something that came up, I'm immediately reaching out to the, my, you know, whoever my contact is with that lender. And those guys are, again, very responsive, willing to get answers you know, to us. So if you tell me what you need from a training mechanism or a broker support stance, or if you're not getting a level of support with a certain lender, tell me, because I'll tell the people, the person that's the decision maker, not the AE, and all, with all due respect to the AEs, um, but I'll be able to communicate to somebody, say, hey, listen, just so you know, I have a couple guys that did loans with you, and they say your process sucks. And I've done loans with you, and I've had a pretty good shot with you. So w there's a disconnect here, and it's either bad communication, bad support, but whatever it is, I know you're a good company, you gotta make sure you change this. And, to me, that feedback is what's gonna drive uh, creating a better channel and a better lender partnerships. Growth focused, this is my single biggest thing and, and I think uh, you know, after talking with everybody, a lot of people have heard me talk about borrow paid compensation models. Um, it's a price war right now in every sector of the mortgage business, whether you're retail sales, consumer direct, wholesale correspondent, Nobody is making thick margins right now. This is a thin margin time. It's extremely competitive. California, it's as competitive as it gets. This is the you know the, this is there's the most volume of lenders here. So you know my thing with growth focus is if you have a lender paid compensation model of two and a half percent, two and a quarter percent, two and three quarters percent, your ability to grow and your ability to do high volume is going to be very difficult. If you're doing small loan amounts, hundred thousand dollars, something like that, I get it, but if you want to compete in California, if you want to compete like where we are, North Jersey and New York, bigger loan amounts, you have to have a competitive model. You have to be able to focus on things less transaction-based and more on dollars and cents. So I, you know, obviously I've learned you know, some people are in a situation, their LO comp is at a certain level where you know, they can't work for a point you know, because their loan officer can't get paid. And the conversation I've had with a lot of you is, you know, I think we underestimate how much our loan officers want to grow. I really do. I, I, when people tell me, I could never tell my loan officer that instead of, you know, them originating the deal, let me, the broker owner, originate because I can't pay them on a borrow pay deal, but I'll originate it. 
We might only be able to make three quarters of a point or a point, which is well below our lender pay level, but I'm gonna reinvest in our company. I'll take that money and buy leads. I'll you know, upgrade our CRM. I'll do that kind of stuff. And the response I get is like, oh, you know, they would take that the wrong way. They would think I'm trying to you know, you know, screw them out of something. My whole thing is, if you're doing a $400,000 deal and you can only make a point on it, that's $4,000. So a $200,000 deal with 200 basis points is $4,000, and that's okay. But we're gonna let a $4,000 deal with a point go out the door? It can't happen. We need to be in a position to compete for every deal. We can't hand deals to our competition. So you know, to me, again, it just has to be a situation where we're, as employers, as loan originators, we need our companies uh, to be getting that revenue because they can then buy us leads. And, and if you're the loan originator, you have the zero incentive, if your owner just says, well, originate the deal, give it to me, and I'm not gonna do anything, I get it, that would not be okay. But you guys need to say, hey listen, I lost two or three deals, and because my lender paid comp is this, or I'm not able to compete for it, I could do it for a half a point, or three quarters of a point. You have the deal, you originate the deal, you're the loan officer of the deal, but will you buy us some leads? Will you, will you help me co-market a realtor? You know, will you get me access to loan sifter, or whatever? Um, we have to compete for every deal. That's our growth. That is the way all of the big lenders are competing. The Keller Mortgage thing this week, what, what's their whole you know, thing that they're coming out with? You know, lowest rate, we're gonna give $1,000 credit, it's not gonna be building the rate, all that nonsense. Again, their whole thing is customer acquisition. They realize that if they're able to get the customer in the door, their ability to keep that customer in the door, putting them in that bubble, is highly likely. So to me, it's, it's the same exact thing. As brokers, we have all the flexibility in the world. We can do whatever we want if we want to do it, but we have to find a way to compete for every single deal. We can't let customers lose, leave, leave our uh, businesses just because it's not within our lender paid compensation model. So again, I'm not telling you how to do your business, I'm just telling you this is how we grow our business. This is how I grew my business. I didn't, I, until I started adopting this model of competing for every deal, I was never able to get out of 50 loans a month. When we did this, that's when we went to 100, 150, all the way up to 300 loans a month. Um, so again, I'm just telling you what worked for me and where I see the most opportunity because when I interview lenders and I say, what percentage of brokers use borrower paid comp? And they tell me two, three, four, five percent. I'm like, whoa, we're not competing. We are not competing. And I, I know nobody wants to work on those thin margins, but at the same time, this is a knife fight. We have to compete. We are in, we're in a position right now where all the big guys, you know, I was talking to brokers last night that are competing on lending tree, and they're telling me, you know, I'm pricing a deal that's making two grand or 1,500, and Loan Depot is at zero. So it gives you an idea of, they're really focused on the customer acquisition part of it. They just want to get the customer in the door. They're willing to lose money to get the customer in the door. We can't be that aggressive, but at the same time, on the deals that are half a point for a $500,000 deal, we can do that. If you work with the owners of your company, if you as a broker owner work with your loan officers and build a model where you'll reinvest that money in the company, it will drive revenue. If you don't incentivize it, if you don't reinvest the money in your company, then those deals are gonna go out the door. So having that grown up conversation between loan officer and business owner is really important because again, to me, this is all about balance. We need balance with our lender partners, we need balance with our loan officers, and that's how we grow. So, AIM, number one goal is we want to become the ultimate resource for the mortgage broker community. I, I want you guys to know one thing uh, very important is this isn't a money maker for me. I'm not you know, doing this, traveling like I am, coming out to see you because there's some mysterious money stream here. $79 for a membership, and I'm just letting you know, that's not gonna pay the bills. I got a, in between these sessions, you guys see me walk around my phone, I'm responding to clients. My loan officers are emailing me. During the, when I leave here right now, I have to respond to my loan officers. I'm a business owner. I'm doing this because I like doing this a lot. I like being a mortgage broker. I'm 33 years old. I wanna do this for pretty much the rest of my life. And the only way that's gonna happen is if we all work together. Because believe me, me doing my stuff great isn't good enough. I'm just one guy. When I brought up the whole brawl conversation with the lenders two, three years ago, and I was just doing it as one business owner, they all told me to hit the bricks. But all of a sudden, 11,000 of us start doing it? Different conversation, game changer. So I realize how powerful all of us as a whole is. And to me, it's like you know, the technology partnerships. 
I never thought I would be talking to Salesforce about doing something for brokers or customized model. I never thought I'd be talking to lenders about stopping to solicit borrowers and changing their broker agreements, but that's the power that we have if we work together. I mean, it really, it is. So to me, like, I'm willing to come here, I'm willing to, you know, be here for you guys. I'm willing to be on the Facebook group, answer any questions that you guys have. I'm willing to do, give access to my team and my resources, open up you know, myself in any way, shape, or form to help everybody. But just understand, same thing that Eric Thomas touched on, we got to do the same thing. You know, to me, when I see brokers helping other brokers, when I'm in those conversations and somebody asks a, a scenario question or whatever question about a loan, or, or even if they're having trouble with the lender and I see a whole bunch of other brokers hop in the conversation and say, hey, this is how you troubleshoot it, or hey, you should call this desk, or whatever. That's the kind of community that is going to drive growth. That is the resource that AIM can be. And I tell all my sales guys in their initial training class when they come on board, you're going to get whatever you want out of this business. If you want to make $30,000 a year, you're going to get $30,000 a year. If you want to make a lot of money, you're going to get a lot of money. It's all about what you put into it. And it's also, if you want to work really, really hard, you can work really, really hard. If you want to be efficient, if you want to dedicate and surround yourself with good people that care about you know, positive growth, if you go out there and work hard to generate good customers, they'll refer you good customers. If you're focused on bad business or low quality business or trying to do loans that nobody else can do, I don't know if you can build a business model like that personally. If you focus on the good quality people, 20 to 30 percent of our loans every month are referrals and it's all because we're doing business with good people and we're fulfilling the American dream and people like to, you know, when, when one person closes on a good transaction, they're gonna, they're gonna say, hey, who'd you work with? You were so happy with your mortgage guy. And that, to me, is, is, is what we're trying to you know, accomplish across the board, is putting you guys in a position where you're growing your business the same way we've grown our business. And uh, again, it starts with competing for the right business, but competing for every deal. Build a longer term business. This goes to the mindset, and I've learned a lot through working on Broad. I think the single biggest thing that I could tell all of you guys about what I learned is not about anything associated with the actual brawl movement. The main thing I learned was that the way that we view customers and the way that the big lenders view customers are completely different. Anybody here watch Shark Tank? Shark Tank. One, one of the most common questions on Shark Tank is, what's your customer acquisition cost? And we never talk about that, but what does that mean? What it means is that it's, you know, to get a customer, you have to pay a premium for it. We're looking at customers and saying, we gotta make a premium every time we do a loan. So these companies like Freedom and Quicken and, and these big, big companies, they look at brokers, they say, hey, we're willing to originate loans and price ourselves more aggressively and, and, and get this business and maybe even lose a little bit of money initially because we know the likelihood of them refinancing, the likelihood of them buying an investment property or second home or referring a client, whatever it is, we know that that's gonna generate us more future business. So understanding and evaluating customers like that is something that is a big part of everything that I do is, is, is learning that you developing that relationship, you getting that five-star review out of them, you developing that kind of drip marketing that's you know, saying happy birthday to them and keeping them in your ecosystem, that's what's gonna translate to your growth. Not, it might not be 2018, but it might be 2020, 2021. It will translate. And to me right now, just so you guys understand long term, every lender, rates are going up and they're going to continue to go up. Every lender right now is looking to build the biggest servicing portfolio ever because when rates come down, that's where they become huge. That's where they really, really blow up. So to me, just understanding A, lender relationships is important, but B, Developing this is very important. Understanding from a customer acquisition standpoint, every customer that you close a loan for has an incredible value, a good review, a referral. It all translates to more and more business. So again, I understand that you know, in your business, you might get a deal that you're competing for that is only making X amount of dollars and, and you don't want to compete for it, but just understand that might result in you getting three to four more deals. And it's worked for us. I've seen it work for some of the biggest mortgage brokers in the country. The next segment after this, we're going to have four to five of the, the biggest mortgage broker owners in the country. And I think you'll hear from them. One of the guys that's here right now, Ramon, he was number 11 originator in the country overall. Number 11 overall. And his business model, referral driven. 
Understand, you need to compete for every deal. You can't be at two and three quarters for every deal. And just understand, this is how you grow. And being open to it, being willing to listen to it and respond to it, and, and really have a, you know, an understanding that you can adapt, it's not too late to change, it's never too late to change, uh, is important because that's how we're gonna grow our businesses long term. Thank you guys for coming. I just wanna say this has been a great seminar. Thanks a lot.